have Docker files in my local repository here, and I can scan these files for security issues using a product like Trivi. So if I have Trivi installed locally, I can use the config scan, do Trivi config and dot, dot means current directory, and have it scan this entire code repository looking for issues, and it'll do that. But what if other people commit code into my repository? They're not necessarily gonna run a security check before they do that. What if I just don't wanna run a security check every single time, I'd rather have automation take care of that, and then I can go off and work on other stuff. So we can set up tools like Trivi in the pipeline itself through the continuous integration process and have a scan automatically kicked off just because we check in the code. In GitHub, we use GitHub Actions to do this. So we're gonna build a GitHub Action to run this Trivi scan. Now in the case of the Trivi product that we're using as an example, they actually have scripts on their webpage showing examples of how to set up these GitHub Actions. So we're just gonna start from that. It's very convenient to start from their script. So first thing we're gonna do is create a feature branch so that we're not working on our production system and potentially breaking something in case this doesn't go well. So we can create a new branch to work on. And this is gonna be automate trivi scan. We're gonna make a copy of the development branch. We don't wanna be working on the development branch either because the test team might be testing on the development branch. Other developers are trying to check their code into the development branch off their features. So we're just gonna create our own feature branch all to ourselves. All right, we're gonna to switch to that branch and now we have copied the files from development. So we have an exact duplicate of the code that everybody's working on at the moment and we can make our changes safely in our little sandbox here. Whenever you make a GitHub action, it always goes into the workflow folder. So we're gonna change into that directory and that's gonna be found under the GitHub directory. So if you don't have any actions at the time, then you're not gonna have this directory. Now what this looks like, let's take a look at another project. So we're gonna go back and just pick, uh, doesn't matter, we'll pick the, the Matilda Terraform project because it has some actions and we'll be able to see what this looks like. So whenever you check on the actions box, you'll see your actions on the left. And these are actually stored in the GitHub workflows directory. So if you don't have that directory structure yet, you can just create it for the first time. So we'll just go ahead and make the directory and it's .github and workflows. Again, we're just copying the structure that's over here that GitHub uses. We'll change into that directory. And this is where we're gonna put our file. And we can call the file whatever we want. And if we don't give it a name inside of the configuration, then GitHub will just use the file's name as the action name. So over here you have like run checkoff.yaml, run trivi.yaml. These uh, are the names of the file that we gave them. So in this case, We'll call it run trivi.yaml. And we're gonna edit that file. We'll use the edit, it's kind of like notepad in Windows. And we'll just paste the code that we got from the Trivi website. And it's pretty close to what we need. Uh, there's a few things we'll change. First of all, the name on line one here this is going to be the name that appears on the left hand side uh, whenever you click on the file so say like you click on this file here see it has the name run checkoff now if we go into the actions if you look over here under the workflows you see how it says run dash checkoff so that's the name that it's pulling from this name on line one so we're going to call this one run trivi 
and that'll populate that left hand side of the screen. Now here's where we decide which branches do we want to scan. So do we want to scan when somebody checks into main? Do we want to scan when somebody checks into development? Do we want to do both? In this case, I'm going to say we want to do both because we want to know any issues as soon as we possibly can. Sometimes called shifting left. Just means we want to get as much information as we can as early as possible. It's generally easier to fix issues if you can fix them sooner. But we may also want to scan code going into production just to do a double check. And if you want, you can scan both. So here we've set it up so that we're going to scan when someone checks into development or when they check into the production branch. We also scan on pull requests. And if you leave it blank, like line seven has nothing after it, it just means do it whenever somebody makes a pull request regardless. Under the jobs, we also have a name. This is a little bit different. If you click on one of your actions in here that you've already made, whenever you do a run, you'll see there's going to be a, a name for the uh, inside the build here. And so this is where you're going to see the different tasks show up. So right here we have steps like check out the code and run trivia vulnerability scanning in IC mode. So that's what you're going to see over here under these steps. And then the build is going to be the name of the overall process. So I don't really want to call it, just call it build. So I'm going to call it run trivi. So that's like the high level name. And then here is the the more precise names of each of the individual steps that we're going to use. All right, so we got everything set up the way we want it. We're going to save the file. And at this point, all we've done is created a YAML configuration file according to the GitHub action specs. Of course, starting with one that was almost what we wanted to make it a lot easier. And we've placed that inside of the .github workflows directory, which is where these YAML files need to live. So overall, once you know the process and these little picky settings that you have to have, like which folder to use and how to name the files and what the different name fields mean, it's not too bad to create one of these workflows. But we still need to check the workflow in. Now I have a file that I use to make the check-in a little bit easier. So if we go up a couple of directories. So I created a git.shell script and all it does is it runs the four check-in commands so that we don't have to keep running those four commands over and over again. So it creates a tag, it creates a commit, based on what you pass in and then it does a push of the tag and a push of the commit. Exact same four commands you would run when you're committing your code but it's just easier if you put it into a script since we always run these four commands every time we do a check-in. Now our new, our new feature branch might throw an error saying oh you don't have a copy of that feature branch up in GitHub. You only have a copy on your local machine and that's perfectly normal. We'll deal with that here in a second. So we're going to run our git.shell. Now we have to pass in the version number and an annotation. So for my version number, what I like to use is just one more than the, the current version. It's not real fancy, but some folks like to use the date or the name of the author or some combination thereof. And that way they can keep a lot better track of complicated projects. This project is not complicated, uh, so we're just going to increment the number. So we're going to do 44 and we are automating trivi scan. Okay, so here's the error that we were on the lookout for. And all this saying is, is that we're trying to push this code up into GitHub, but remember we created a feature branch so that we would have a sandbox to work in and not bother anybody else. And 
we never created that sandbox up in GitHub. We only created it on the local machine. So what we're going to do is just do a git push and push everything up into that feature branch. We can even rerun our git.shell script just to make sure everything's okay. You can do a git status to make sure everything's okay. Um, and at this point, everything in this copy of the code, which is the feature branch, has been pushed up into GitHub. Now you'll notice if you get an error about git adding, it means that you made a new file on the local computer, but you haven't actually told Git to keep track of that file. And we did add a new file, which was the trivi. So we need to add in that trivi.yaml file. So we're just going to do a git add, and then we actually added two folders and the file. Just add it all. Redo the push. Recheck the status when we're done. And everything's working fine now. So in summary, what we just did is we used the four commands that we always use to push code. We dealt with the fact that we created a new branch, but that branch hadn't been pushed up to GitHub yet. And we also dealt with the fact that we created a new file and that file hadn't been added to the files that are tracked yet. So we took care of everything. And you can see why having that get that shell script is so handy because it's really annoying to rerun those four commands over and over again and then deal with the errors and run them again, deal with the errors and run them again. So having it inside of a shell script uh, just makes it a lot easier. Feel free to copy it out of this repository if you want to take that one. Okay, now we push all the changes on the feature branch. Let's check out the development branch and move the features up there. And then we're going to go ahead and move this into production. So we're going to do git and check out the development branch and we're going to merge the changes from our feature branch that we just worked so hard on and then we're going to push the changes up into the development branch and we can do that um, just by using the same script that we already had so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the version in development and then We'll just rerun the scripts command because we know it's going to run those four lines of code that we need to push everything up. All right, we're in good shape. And we said we're going to go all the way to the end and we're going to push this all the way into production. So we're going to do get check out our main and then we're going to run the same commands again. We're going to do the get merge of the development. All right, and we're getting the version file from development, so we technically don't even, even need to update the version file because we're pulling in the one from the lower branch. So now we're going to just push our changes up into GitHub and do a good status just to make sure everything's okay. Looks great. So now let's go take a look at what GitHub looks like visually. We're going to go back to the repository that we were working on, which was the Docker repository. All right, so now you'll see that we have the GitHub workflows folder. And of course, if we click on that, we'll see the trivi.yaml file, and we'll see all of our changes in it that we made. But let's go look at the GitHub actions. Notice that the name of the workflow is the name that we put in on line number one. And you'll also notice that the trivi scan already happened on the development branch when we pushed that development branch up a couple minutes ago. And the scan is currently running on the main branch, which we pushed much more recently. So let's go take a look at the completed scan. And we'll notice that the line that we had on line seven is the name of the run that happened. So that's nice. And here is the steps that were in there, the different job tasks. And if we go over here to the security tab, we'll find that the issues have been pushed up into the code scanning alerts type of security alerts. And you click on view alerts and we're able to see the different alerts that were detected by Trivi. You have to look kind of closely, but you can see it says detected by Trivi and then where it found the problem. 